I'm in Hensford, I've come to see my friend Stuart who's been working with me as a dental technician for the past 30 years. He's going to show us how he makes dentures and explain the difference between them. Hi Simon, glad to see you. Thanks for coming over. Okay Stu, this is the first part of the denture process. Can you just talk us through what you're doing? Okay, we've had the impressions in from the practice and now we're going to turn these into plaster casts by mixing up the plaster, vibrating them into the impressions and then making up uh, a mound of plaster pr to produce the model. Okay. So, Here's where we start off. This is all done by hand. It's, it doesn't have to be exact at this stage. These are first impressions. Yeah, that's good. And then we just gently tap the plaster in. So this whole process is important because if you don't get this right, there's no accuracy to this. There's no accuracy. If you put holes all over it or miscast them, then it's back to square one, which means another impression for the patient. So what we're trying to produce here is a record of what the dentist sees that then we can work on and do our part of the job. And the first stage in that will be to produce a special tray and a bite rim probably, that then we send back to the practice and then they can take that forward to the next stage. Well, this is stage one of probably four. So this first stage is just the first rough impression yeah and then Stuart's going to make a we'll call a special tray that will then allow us to do a more accurate finished impression of the denture we made on so that, that's the real critical stage if you have an initial poor impression that's underextended or the alternate isn't mixed correctly and it doesn't capture enough of the area for us to make a good special custom made tray yeah. then that error starts repeating itself all the way down the line um, and ultimately it can lead to a poorly fitting denture if these sort of things aren't picked up. I've, I've seen the results where these things have tried to be uh, done in a quick fashion and it just doesn't work well. It doesn't work well for the patient, it doesn't work well for the dentist, it doesn't work out for the laboratory unfortunately. So these are the impressions that we cast earlier. The plaster's now set. So we can see they have removed the alginate part of the impression we then have our impressions of the patient's mouth that we begin to do the work on. Okay. So we have the rough model, now what we're going to do is reduce it down in size and make it neat and tidy so we can work on it. So I switch on the model trimmer. Oh, that's much better. This is a really good starting point because we can see the back of these what are called the tube rosters, and it's important that a denture sits all the way around that, so we get an extension all the way around and we get a really good suction and the denture's going to be a lot tighter. We can see lots of landmarks on this, for instance these areas here where the muscles, the cheek muscles are attached, this area here is where the, the lip is attached and again the cheek on that side. So I've got all the important features that I really want to see on a good quality impression and this will then allow Stuart to construct a, a very good special tray and then our next impression will be even better um, so it's a very good starting point this is. Right so what we're going to do next is the next stage in the process which is making the bite rim and that enables the dentist to then register the way in which the patient's jaws come together so what Neil's doing is he's melting the wax which is now going to fit over the cast that we prepared earlier we start off with a, a large piece which forms the base plate. Trim that down to the correct shape, taking uh, care that it goes over the anatomical features of the mouth, the muscles, but forms a good, accurate fit so we get as much suction as possible in the bite rim. Not extending it too far back because that might uh, be very uncomfortable for the patient. See now we're taking the wax off the muscles you see the shape of it arriving and then a much larger sheet now this is going to form the rim that builds up the height and what this does is it takes place the place of the teeth and it'll give us the height distance between the upper jaw and the lower teeth and squash it round to the shape of the arch 
Just making sure now there's plenty of adhesion between the upper block and the lower block, between the upper rim and the, the base plate. And that's the basic shape form. You just need to cool it down a bit and then we can start working with a wax knife to get the shape correct then. This is the wax block, the bite block, or occlusal registration rim that the dentist receives from ourselves. And if you see the height of it, this enables him to register the upper jaw against the lower jaw in the correct height relationship. Like so. And you can see from the articulator that we've got over here, you just pop that block on there, Neil. That's one that's been used in the mouth. And then we can put the, the actual acrylic teeth on there so we can produce the next stage, which is the wax drying. The basic articulator is what we call a simple hinge. So if you look at the rear of the articulator, it's a simple open and closing arrangement, one direction, and it, it produces a basic centric relationship just a jaw opening closing relationship. If you move across to the next articulator, as well as going up and down, the same as the previous one, the simple hinge, this articulator has a sliding function at the back and that enables us to create a greater range of movement with the teeth really and then that leads to less interference and less problems with the finished denture. Normally we'd use the more complex articulators on private cases and the simple hinge articulator on the National Health Service cases. Ultimately, we get the better results from the more complex articulator. But it does take longer, and that's why there's a cost. Stuart, I know when I'm, I'm after doing a better quality of denture, um, I know that you use different types of teeth. Can yep. you tell us what's the difference between the, the qualities of teeth? Basically, the look of them uh, and what they're composed of and how they'll wear long term in the patient's mouth. So we've got our basic NHS teeth there, which are perfectly adequate for the job. They're CE mark, like all the rest of the materials that we use, and they are a decent standard of tooth. But they are very plain. They're not as durable as the private teeth and they won't last as long before they start wearing out. If we look at the private sets, they're an entirely different set of teeth in terms of both appearance and both in composition. Uh, they're much harder wearing and like anything else in life, you'll get what you pay for. If you pay for private teeth, you should be paying for a better product and that's what we've got here. We've got a greater Range of, range of shades to choose from and we've got more moulds that we can choose to match the patient's natural shape. So an average full denture will last seven to eight years, studies show us. So what sort of condition would, would these basic teeth be in compared to? Fairly worn and flattened I would say. So you're getting a loss of appearance as time goes by? You're getting a loss of appearance, you're also getting a loss of face height as well i.e. the dentures are wearing out and becoming smaller so your jaws are closing. Okay, and that can create problems with the patient's jaw. Correct. With the harder teeth, they're more durable and you're, you're more liable to maintain the relationship which we found when we first started the case okay. seven or eight years previously. And I suppose with the, the better quality, there's more choice of shape of tooth, is there? There's more choice of shades in general. We've got the full range of shades there to choose from, from light to dark. Whereas with the NHS teeth, generally, we get a much more reduced shade range. And then when we look at the mould chart, we've got a vast choice. And amongst that range of so tooth moulds... shapes, are they? Yeah, we've, we've got sort of general shape of square, triangular, tapered. More, some are more feminine looking, some are more masculine looking. Some are very large, some are very small. So amongst that entire range there, there's enough to suit, I would say, everybody. 
That's good, because I know I've often taken photos for you of the patient before they lost the Always teeth. Always useful. So you, you'll use a chart like that to choose the, the teeth for the denture, will you? Yeah, we can match those. We can match photographs up. And it's not very often we come unstuck with that. Normally there's some mould on there that's suitable. With the private teeth, they've got that natural appearance and natural opalescence and more vitality in them that makes them, in some cases, virtually indistinguishable, particularly when they're mixed in with natural teeth in the mouth. It is very, very difficult to tell them apart. I'm afraid with some of the more standard teeth, that's not quite so easy for us to do that yeah. good aesthetic job. And they do show yeah. This is the Ivacap injection material and this comes in a pre-dose form of monomer, which is the liquid, and polymer, which is the powder. So what we do is tip the monomer into the polymer. You can see that one's already waiting there for us. We pop the lid on. This goes into this machine and what the machine does, instead of you having to use your hands to mix it, as we do in one of the more simplistic processes, the machine does all the work for you and ensures a very consistent standard of product. And this funnel enables the material that we're just mixing up to shoot through the back. Essentially, it's the pink part of your denture. So if I put the lid on now, that's closed and then placed under pressure. And again, in the same way that we mix that up for five minutes and it's consistent, this is always pressurized to exactly the same amount of pressure. And it has its individual flask. So it's all very tightly controlled. So what I'm doing now is raising the pressure. And then once the pressure's up to a 80 PSI. Once it up, we put the lock on it and then we can release the pressure now. Put the pressure in the flask. Because of the locking device, it's going to stay at 80 PSI. Stay that compression inside. Yeah. yeah. With the conventional materials, you've seen the flask there with the two halves. With normal materials, we have this kind of flask. The key difference is, instead of the material being fed in constantly under a consistent pressure through the back, with this we have to guess the amount of material that goes in there and then the flask is closed so it's more of a one-off procedure. With this there's continuous feeding of material in there so any shrinkage is compensated for so the fit is more accurate and it's a more homogeneous denture. So not only is the fit better but the actual quality of the plastic is going to be better? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, one superbly consistently mixed piece of material. Just a light squeeze, get any remaining air out. Just hear a little bit of a squeeze there of the air. And then the material is placed in. And what's that you're putting onto the This top of is it there? the clamp that enables the pressure, compressed air, to come through and keep it at an even pressure during the curing cycle, which is where all the consistency and the accuracy and the better okay. fit comes from. So the compressed from. air is forcing it into the, into the mould? Correct, yeah. When I turn up the pressure gauge, the clamp tightens right around the flask. Cut that one out. But now we've got the pressure up, we've got our pressurised flask, and we've got our pressurised air, and it's keeping a consistent flow the flask. We've finished the waiting time of five minutes. Pop the flask in the water, put the insulating balls on the top, set the timer and that's it. Another 45 minutes, the denture's cooked and then we just have to do the next phase which is filing and polishing it and cleaning it all up because unfortunately although they go in very nice and smooth looking when they come out they do have comes a little bit of, rough and... It comes out a little bit rough, yeah. What would the difference be then between the sort of economy denture and, and the all singing, all dancing, dancing top quality one? Well, we've got an economy denture here. As you can see, the teeth are a, a reasonable looking um, in terms of aesthetics. Um, that is the appearance of them. 
and the denture base is a CE marked material that we use but it's very plain looking in comparison to what we can see with the private dentures you can see there's a lot more life um, in the teeth they're a lot more natural looking and the gums themselves have been altered and changed to make them reproduce probably what we see more often in the mouth yeah, yeah well, well with the private work we can afford to spend more time doing this kind of work on them to produce the better results yeah. the teeth themselves are harder and more resilient as well as being better looking and it'll fit better it'll last longer and those are key things and it'll look better okay. with the high impact material it's three times more resistant on average than the normal denture brace material okay so there can is they still break i mean a lot of people will clean them over a sink if they drop it in a sink is it is it still going to break generally with the higher impact materials they take a lot more effort to break than in the nhs one okay. which is a lot more brittle right so there is that um, extra resistance to fracture when you're cleaning it's them. It's good, definitely. But it's stronger, better fitting, and it, and it certainly looks a more attractive denture. And yeah, yeah. That's at the end of the day, what we're trying to achieve is a, a natural-looking, well, given uh, denture. Given the choice, if I was, if somebody was asking me what to have, I'd say, well, please ask your dentist and pay the extra to have the better result and the better materials because they're going to last you a few years yeah uh, it's important that they do their job for as long as possible well it's like anything isn't it the more you pay for something the better the quality you tend to get definitely with private denture work yeah. definitely yeah, yeah.